Section 7.4, Central Limit Theorem. Probably one of the most important theorems in all of statistics. So if we take a large sample from a population with a mean of mu, standard deviation, sigma, then x bar will be normally distributed. Remember those sample means with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma over square root n. And if the sample size is large enough, this is true regardless of the shape. So this is telling us that we can use the normal curve even if the population is not normal, depending on sample size. So what is that large enough sample size? So it turns out that 30 is the cutoff. So if n is greater than or equal to 30, then x bar is normal. The population could be right skewed. The population could be anything. The population could be unknown. As long as we have a sample size of 30, we can use the normal curve. Uh, if, we, if it's in between 15 and 30, so 15 included, 30 not, um, then we can still use the normal curve as long as it's, the population is not severely skewed. So we may look at a histogram to check that. And then less than 15 is just too small, um, so we would have to know that it's a normal population. So ideally, we get data of at least 30, and we don't have to worry about the rules. Um, but really, we do want at least 15, and we can just check that it's not skewed. If your sample does not meet any of these three requirements, then it's just unknown. So it doesn't mean it's not normal. It just means we don't know. And so in the real world, we'd probably collect more data to take care of that. So let's do example two, and we'll be done with this chapter. So example two. A pest company uses a certain pesticide as a perimeter barrier for residential customers. So just like they put a pesticide maybe around your house or something. The pesticide has a mean effectiveness of 37.8 days. So I'm going to write down mu is 37.8. And a standard deviation or sigma of 7.8. Both are in days. So let's suppose we take random samples of size 50. And we measure the effectiveness, the effectiveness time is measured in each of these applications. So what's the distribution of the population? So the only way to know the population right now is really to be told. Um, we don't have the data, we don't have really any information, so we don't know. It's not stated. We don't even have the data to graph and check, right? So we really have no idea what the population looks like. But we do know the distribution of the sample means. Because my sample size is 50, which is at least 30, the averages, the sample means, x bar is normal. That's from the central limit theorem, which I'll abbreviate. My dog is making weird noises. So let's find the average and standard deviation. So the average is the average, so it's still 37.8. The standard deviation changes. We take the original standard deviation and divide by square root n. So 7.8 divided by square root 50. And you should get 1.1031. Um, how about the expected error? This is the same thing we've been doing over and over. The expected error is always two standard deviations. We're talking about the means, so we're going to use sigma with the x bar. So it'll be 2 times 1.1031. 1 and I get an expected error of about 2.2. Zero, six, two. So basically the effectiveness should be within 2.2062 days. So what happens to our answer in part C if we increase the sample size? 
Um, so I think we should get less error, right? Larger sample means less error. So I think we should get less error, so less than 2.2 days. So let's check that out. So we're gonna change the sample size to 150 and we'll find the expected error. So our N is now 150. Expected error is two standard deviations. So let's find sigma. So sigma of X bar will be the original sigma over square root N. So the original sigma was 7.8 over square root 150. Point six three six eight, and we'll round up to seven. And then the expected error would just be two times this. So two times point six three six eight seven. And so now it should be within the average should be within one point two seven three seven four days. So we're getting closer and closer estimates to the average because we have less expected error. So if we can tell you if we can tell you an average and say you'll be within 1.2 days versus you'll be within 2.2 days, right? You'd rather have a closer estimate, right? We'd rather be within 1.2 days. So it's just saying we're getting closer estimates. So all of this is gonna be really important for the remaining chapters. We're gonna to need to use this normal curve to do some cool statistics. So right now we're just figuring out, can we use the normal curve? And then in chapter eight, nine, and 10, um, we'll figure out do we, what we're gonna do with the normal curve. So this chapter is all about, can we use it? And we'll see what we can do with it later. So the points of this chapter is, um, the sample must be randomly selected for any of these methods to work. That should make sense, right? We're still assuming good random data. And what else? Before we do anything, we're gonna check that the sampling distribution is approximately normal. So you shouldn't be using the normal curve if you can't use it. So this is really gonna be our step one in the remaining chapters. If our data doesn't fit the normal pattern, then we're done, we're stuck. But let's see, when is it normal? So remember means and proportions are two separate worlds. So for sample means, the sampling distribution is normal if the population is normal, um, or if it's unknown or not normal, then N needs to be at least 30 to guarantee that our sampling distribution will be normal. And then the other cutoff was at least 15, if at least not severely skewed. Um, we'll notice proportions have completely different numbers because it's a completely different world. For sample proportions, we need to check that NP and NQ are at least 10. So totally different cutoffs. Try to not mix them up. Um, when I'm doing the remaining problems for this class, I usually step one is, is this a mean problem or, or a proportion problem? They're like two different lands. The concepts are the same, but the process is different. Um, and now that we know, once we know and confirm that our distribution is approximately normal, um, then you need to make sure you don't forget to find the sample, the mean of the sample means or proportions and the standard deviation. Um, it is not the same standard deviation that's given. Means are less spread out. So make sure you find, once you decide it's normal, you find mu x bar and sigma x bar for the mean land or mu of p hat and sigma of p hat in proportion land. We're never in both at the same time, so it's one or the other. And so now that we know how to use the normal curve, um, next week in chapter eight, we'll get to figure out what to do with it. So we're just practicing identifying when we're allowed to use it.